Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to 33 Mile Garage. Today, we are going to be talking about windshield wipers. You know, back in the 70s, from a mechanical design, it's pretty crazy what they had to do to get these things to work and get them to hide away. So, Corvette windshield wipers, uh, especially 68 through 72, can be a bit complicated, but I'll be honest with you, when you break it down, it's not too big of a deal. I had four major problems with my system that was keeping it from working. The first one was when you go to flip the switch, what's to happen is this wiper door comes up out of the way, hits a uh, switch, sends power to the motor and everything works fine. But what happened is uh, on the backside mount of the dash, there's a solenoid switch. So when you flip the switch for your wipers, it flips the solenoid, creates a vacuum and then pulls the door up. That, that electrical contact wasn't working because I had a ground that was off. So doing some previous work earlier, I must've knocked the ground off so the system wasn't grounded, not gonna work. That was one problem. Second problem I had is on the main power to the motor, what was going on is there's two different connections that it goes through. I had some corrosion in one of the connections, so even though the door was making contact, it wasn't uh, sending power to the motor. What happened is the motor would come on, but the washer pump was frozen up, so it was binding the motor, plus with my ground, I wound up burning up a motor because of those reasons, between the ground and uh, just the binding of the washer pump. So. And I'll go through that with you and I'll show you the washer pump and how that was binding. Actually, I bought three replacement motors before I found one that worked. And actually, the motors were fine. It was just the ground wires on the motors were the issue. So I'll go through testing the motor and show you the ground wires and stuff and what to look for. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you're ever doing this, bench test the wiper motor before you even put it in the car. Uh, I definitely recommend that. So anyway, let's get into diagnosing this and I'll show you what I had to go through to get it going. All right, first thing you want to do is check your wiper fuse. So uh, you want to do this in the car. You can see right here where you can see a little bit of corrosion uh, from condensation around the fuse. So uh, what happens is these leads start to corrode and then the uh, fuse the fuse is good, but the contacts go bad. So you want to check here and get like 11.6, 11.6 on both sides. So I know the fuse is good and the contacts are clean from both sides. Another thing you want to do is make sure your ground coming off your battery is grounded good to your frame. All right, you can see there where the battery terminal is grounded to the frame. You wanna make sure there's no corrosion because if there is, you got a bad ground there or corrosion, man, it's nothing but problems. It's super easy to fix and really easy to put a new terminal in there, but make sure that connection is good. So underneath the hood, we got some basic things we gotta check. First off, we're gonna check the connection where these two red wires with the white stripe come into this uh, plug this and before the switch what we want to do on this horizontal plug we want to check to make sure that we're getting 12 volts so the way the system works is this will have 12 volts all the time key off position so there you go we got 12 volts going there and we should have nothing going back here so what happens is this 12 volts is going to come through it's going to loop through this switch right here and come back out so we know we got 12 volts here we can plug this plug back in. Next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have 12 volts going to the motor. So that hot wire is gonna go through this switch, 12 volts to the motor. Unplug this guy, we're gonna check this. Switch is not making contact, so we're not gonna have 12 volts going to the motor yet. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna manually move the cowl lid. When we move the cowl lid back, what it's gonna do is gonna make contact with the switch right here. You'll hear the switch make contact all right and now that's going to give us 12 volts to the moat that's going to give us 12 volts to the moat all right we're going to do a quick check on this switch so what i did is i just took the console down and we're just looking at the back side of the switch here so first test we'll do is dark blue wire far left no power at all center wire black with a white stripe nothing and then the far wire to the right the light blue nothing so key on, what's gonna happen is dark blue wire on the far left, we'll get 12 volts. Center wire, black with white stripe, we got nothing. And then light blue wire to the right, we got 12 volts there. I'm a little bit under, my battery's going low. So next thing that we'll do is put the windshield wipers in low. This is a bit of a trick to do. All right, windshield wipers are in low speed right now. So Dark blue wire on the left hand side is going to have 12 volts. Center wire, black with white stripe, nothing. And then to the far right, 
will have nothing also on the light blue wire. So when we go to high speed now, I hit the wiper pump, that's the noise in the background there. All right, so that's done with its cycle. So dark blue wire on the left, 12 volts. Center wire, black wire with a white stripe, 12 volts. Light blue wire to the far right, nothing. So that's just a quick way that you can go through and uh, test your switch. And a little bit quicker than bench testing. All right. Back to off position. 12 volts on the far left, dark blue, nothing in the middle. And then light blue wire to the far right, 12 volts. That's pretty much it to test the switch. Make sure you install the switch that the lower uh, yellow goldish colored ground strap is actually touching the housing. When you install the, the switch, it's really easy to grab with your fingers and push that contact point up and it doesn't make contact with the housing. So be mindful when you do it that it is hitting the housing. Okay, so next up, we're gonna test the wiper solenoid. So you've got this plug right here. You got a light blue wire, two uh, yellow wires going into the two prong plug. That's for your solenoid. So to test this, what you're going to do is the key in the run position or on position. Both of these will be hot. They'll both be 12 volts. So 12 volts, 12 volts on the yellow, 12 volts on the yellow wires. So now what's going to happen is when you turn the wipers on, that blue wire should go zero volts. So yellow, yellow wire, 12 volts. The blue wire zero so when that blue wire goes to zero that sends the solenoid uh opens up the vacuum will open up the door your wipe that door makes the switch and your wipers will come on so that's your uh switch and your solenoid shut these off so to make this easy what i did is i took the uh, gauge cluster out so this is your tack that's your spinometer and then uh, this unit right here, this is your solenoid that actuates the uh, wiper door. What happens when you turn your wiper switch, the on position sends a signal through here, opens this vacuum, and the door opens. Uh, but what in my case, I had two issues that happened here. Is one, is I was working on the radio in a pre at a previous time, and I knocked off this ground switch, uh, this ground wire. So if this ground wire comes off, the switch is no longer activated. The whole system works on the ground, and with that wire off, it didn't work. Uh, the other thing is my carelessness. This is a two wire system. There's two prongs that come off of here. I busted this off. So I'm in the process of getting another one. All right, I got the new solenoid came in today, which is kind of cool. The only thing that's not cool is putting this thing in. These things are a bugger to put in. So the best way I found to do it is I moved the center console out and then you can see right down in there, you can see where that's mounted. But even the way it's mounted now, I get better access than coming from underneath. It's really hard to get to them from underneath and you can't see anything. This way, at least I can get a nut driver on the back of it. You know, a quarter inch nut driver, feed it through there and get to the back of it. Getting it off is not so much of a big deal. Trying to get the screws lined back up to get it back on, eh, that's kind of a much bigger deal. I'm kind of dreading that a little bit. But, and it's important, it can't just lay back there. It has to be screwed on solid and tight against the tack. Uh, cause the tack's grounded and this unit has to be grounded. So, yeah, I'm gonna pull that out of there. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the wires off the motor remove, and remove the motor so we can do some testing with that. So, uh, first thing to do, uh, just pop this ground wire off here. This is really important. Uh, the other thing is you've got this blue wire and yellow wire. These two guys are just for the washer pump. You pump. You want to be careful with them. And they just have a straight connection. They don't have the bladed connection like the others. And then the blue, yellow, and green wire. Pop that guy out of there. So red wire on top here. Disconnect that guy. And that's pretty much it for the wires on the pump. And then there's three uh, nuts, one, two, and then a third one down below. Just below that ground wire. It's a little hard to see the camera there. I'll take those out. And uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the distributor cap out and just get that out of the way, just the two screws on there. Gives you a little bit more room to pull the motor out of the way. So let's get that pulled out and on the workbench. 
All right, once we got the motor on the bench to test these, it's actually pretty simple. First off, you just want to pop this cover off. You want to be careful with it. What you typically do is run a screwdriver down as far as you can close to that pin there. That's where it's attached at, and then pry it up. If you try to pry on the outside, sometimes you can mess up these covers. So just be careful with that, especially if you want to reuse it. So next thing, you just got these quarter-inch screws. Take these three guys out of here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to take the washer pump off so we can see the mechanism. So we'll just pop this guy off real quick. This last screw on the left here, there's a little ground wire or little ground strap on here. You want to make sure you hold on to that guy because you're going to need him again. So pop that guy off. All right. That's it for the screws. We'll lift the washer pump off. The one thing you'll have to keep in mind, you've got this ground strap right here. We have to put that ground strap back on while we test the motor. Put that screw back in here. Run that screw back in, just to hold that ground on there. What you'll need is three ground wires. So black wires, this is a little bit longer one. I got a little alligator clip on the end of it. I just use that one for connecting to the body of the housing. So uh, that's all I do with that. And then the other ground, I do have these blade clips on here. Is These connections are very close together. And if you ground them out to each other, it causes a problem. The grounds, you're going to go to the two outside terminals, the far one on the right and the far one on the left. All right, so we'll connect those guys. All right, and then you got the two grounds. What you want to do is you just want to keep these grounds away from the motor for the time being. I think we're going to need two power wires or two hot wires. I got the two red wires. Again, I'm going to use blade connections on here. Is I have to go right in between these two grounds. I don't have power to it. Uh, the reason why I wanted to use the blade connectors is these terminals are so close together, they're really easy to short out. So you gotta be careful with that. So connect the hot wire there, and then primary power wire, connect the other hot wire there. All right, so with this all connected together, we've got live power to both the red, red wires, and we've got these two grounds. So the one on the right and the one on the left, we're gonna ground them together, and that's gonna put the motor in a slow speed. Takes it out of the park, puts the motor in a slow, slow speed. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is the wire on the left-hand side, we'll remove that, that's gonna put the motor into high speed. Motor's in high speed. We ground this back out again. That was the wire on the left. When we move the wire on the right feed, there's going to be a little tab that comes out and grabs it and puts it in park. All right, ground out both wires together. Motor's in slow speed. Ground on the left is off, high speed. Ground back on, low speed. Lever comes out, back in park. All right, uh, one thing that you can, one thing you have to be careful of is I'll reground the wire, comes out of park. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're testing these. If you do take both grounds off at the exact same time, the motor's going to go kind of haywire. I'll show you what happens then. But see, now the motor's just randomly going and going. You'll have to ground both of them again. Get yourself back into slow speed. Take the wire on the right back off. Part comes out, and you're done. Take both connections off, and that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pump back on and I'll show you how to test the pump also with this unit. So the wiring is going to be the same to test the pump except for we're going to add another ground and a power wire onto the pump and I'll show you how we do that. i mount the pump back on. We've got this ground strap that's going to go underneath. Line up that hole. And then remember we've got this ground tab that has to go back on. So it might be kind of hard to see. A little bit of a trick to line all this back up again, but... I'm going to get these screws back in. Alright, so we'll go ahead and connect our ground wires back to the motor body and get running in slow speed. Alright. We're in slow speed right now, and you can see what's happening right now is you've got this going back and forth. That's the cam gear underneath moving it, and then you can see right now this wheel standing still. All right, 
when we add power to this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the switch and suck the switch in. When it draws the switch in, there we go. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna make one revolution. So you can, I don't know if you can see with the light, the pump moving inside, but it's grabbing that lever and moving it back and forth. I'll hit it again. It'll pull the lever back. And there we go, it makes a whole revolution. All right, uh, one thing you gotta keep in mind that this spring is very important, the tension on here. So if this spring doesn't have enough tension, what's gonna happen is when you shoot power to it, pull it, it's not gonna allow this to come back. So a lot of times you'll notice that this won't, this won't engage if the spring isn't tight enough. So you gotta watch the tension on that spring. Do is we'll take the wire on the left off, motor will go into high gear or high speed, and then we'll add the power wire again to the pump. And there you go. Every time you hit the switch, what it does make a connection here, pulls that lever off, and there you go. Put this back into slow speed. And hit it one more time. You can see that lever come away. Now it's gonna come back around to that notch and fall back in. And that's pretty much it. So we take the wire off on the right hand side, goes back in the slow, motor's back into park, and it's ready to assemble back in the car. Reinstall the pump is pretty easy. First thing we'll do is we'll snap this cover back on. Just line it up with that hole and push that through. Snap the cover back on. I've got the battery disconnected right now, so there won't be any problem as far as any shorts. Just guide that back through. Line up the three studs. Pretty much nothing to it. I'll plug in the windshield wiper wire, or the windshield washer wire, so yellow one in the top position here. Slide him in there. Blue one down below. Those are both connected. So these will get plugged in down here. Your other power wire. This is the power wire with the red stripe. That's your main power wire. It comes off the switch. So we'll plug that dude in. All right, got that plugged in. And then we've got one last ground wire. All right, so we've got this black ground wire. That black ground wire is gonna go to that tab. That's that, and then everything should be working perfectly. I'll fire it up and give it one more test. facts about 1968 through 72 Corvettes. If you turn your wipers on, your windshield wipers come on, and your cowl pops up. But the interesting thing is there's an override down at the bottom underneath the dash here on the far right hand side. You pull that lever down and the cowl will pop right up. Your windshield wipers will not come on but the cowl moves. So that's just a cowl override. The other thing that's interesting too is if you go over to the left hand side, there's another switch. You pull that one down and your headlights pop up and your lights will not come on. Your headlight doors will just pop open for maintenance and cleaning or anything like that. Push both levers up, headlights closed, and cowl closed. something cool in 1970 when you turn your washers on it also squirt on your headlights too to clean your headlights while you're driving down the road all right that's going to wipe up the windshield wiper project 
Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And again, I really appreciate all the people who have been watching, commenting on the videos, and subscribing. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.